Is there such a thing as no carb foods or should we aim for foods with low carbs? It all depends on your health goals. There is a lot of interest in low carb and keto diets, but there is also a lot of misinformation. Today, we will give you the bigger picture and clear up those questions. Stay tuned. If you want to truly understand how the body works to master your health, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you do not miss anything. So, we will categorize foods into four groups. One, true zero sugar, zero carb foods. Two, foods with zero or no trace carbs. Three, low carb foods. Four, and foods where carb content depends on quantity. So, the foods with zero calories and zero carbs that you could consume unlimitedly, whether you are trying to fast, reduce calories, do intermittent fasting, or decrease insulin, a water, apple cider vinegar in the water, and herb tea. Herb tea should be perfectly safe, but some fruitier ones might contain fruit extract which could give you a few milligrams of something, but you are still safe. Green tea, black tea, and coffee are listed in order of increasing amounts of caffeine. While caffeine doesn't have any calories, for some people it could trigger a slight stress response, an adrenaline effect, increase cortisol, and blood sugar, and affect insulin. Last on the list here is stevia, and with that, we could include things like monk fruit extract as well. They have zero calories, but because they have a sweet taste, it could trigger a cephalic effect. The brain senses sweetness and assumes that food is coming, so it starts to drive up some insulin to deal with the anticipated food. Everyone is different, so some people won't have an issue with that. If you're worried, measure and see what's happening. Now we have the category of foods containing minimal or, for practical purposes, zero carbohydrates. This doesn't mean they don't have any carbohydrate molecules, but the quantities are so small that you will have to consume large amounts of these foods to get even a gram of sugar, and their impact on insulin or fasting routines is insignificant. Take, for example, lemon water. By adding just a teaspoon of lemon juice to your water, you are only consuming around 0.4 grams of carbohydrates. It won't influence insulin levels significantly and will flavor up your water, potentially over up to two quarts. Similarly, infusing your water by adding sliced cucumber or fruits like lemons and oranges can enhance your water's appeal. And by not squeezing or eating that fruit, you will absorb merely fractions of a gram of sugar from the infusion alone. Next, regardless of whether you opt for lamb, fish, or chicken, protein-packed foods all have approximately 20% protein content and zero carbohydrates. If your primary aim is to minimize insulin resistance, bear in mind proteins can invoke an insulin response. Therefore, within a ketogenic diet, we suggest limiting your protein intake, maintaining a low carbohydrate count, and focusing on high-fat foods. The following proteins are fats. Foods high in fats provide sufficient calories without adding carbohydrates to your diet. Sources can include extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, MCT oil popularized via bulletproof coffee, and various cooking fats such as tallow, lard, butter, and ghee. Finally, if prepared with good quality oils like avocado or walnut, mayo can also fit within this category. For those following a fasting routine or ketogenic diet, the bulk of your calories should come from these practically zero-carb food sources. It likely amounts to 90-95% to of your total calorific intake. This concludes our exploration into foods that are, for all effective purposes, free of carbohydrates. Now we're moving on to foods that have low carb, and this is where, again, even though you eat most of your calories here, this is where you still get a lot of bulk. And we're starting off with some protein foods like eggs and cheese that some people consider them to have zero carbs, and they sort of do, but eggs have about 1% carbohydrate. So if you eat three eggs, you're probably going to get three to four eggs. You're going to get a couple of grams of carbohydrate, not a big deal, but we still want to know about it so that we understand these principles. Next on the list is the avocado, and that's one of nature's miracles. It's like one of a kind. It is technically a fruit, but it's considered a vegetable, because it's not sweet. It is the only plant that is not a seed that is extremely high in fat. So it has about 15% fat and about 2% carbohydrates. You could eat a lot of avocado and not rack up a substantial amount. Then we have three different kinds of nuts, macadamia nuts, pecan nuts, and walnuts. These are the ones that I like the most because they are the lowest in carbohydrates. Macadamias have five grams, pecans have four grams, and walnuts have about 3 grams, but the fat is also the highest in the macadamia 
and the pecan. And not quite so much in the walnut, these are nuts that taste good raw. After the nuts, we have the seeds of flax, chia, hemp, and pumpkin. These are the ones with the highest fat to carbohydrate ratio. So flax only has two grams of carbs, chia has four, hemp has three, and pumpkin has five. So these are good foods. The pumpkin typically is snacking food, flax, chia, and hemp. You would not necessarily snack on, but they are good for things like smoothies and you can grind it and put it on cereal and so forth again. Because it's a plant food, you don't want to overdo it. Next, in the low-carb group, we have the leafy greens. And now there are things like Swiss chard with 2 grams of carbs, kale with 5 grams of carbs, lettuce with 2 grams of carbs, spinach with 2 grams of carbs. So these you can eat pretty freely because even though they have a few grams of carb in them, you're not going to consume hundreds of grams. One of these big tubs of lettuce that you get might have 400, like a pound, 450 grams. So that might be 9 grams, the carbs in the entire tub. And you're probably not going to finish that tub in less than 5 or 6 salads. There are so many low-carb good foods here. So olives are also a plant food. I guess I have to say that there are two foods, avocado and olives. And I'm sure there are some more exceptions, but they're both very high in fat and very low in carbohydrates. So olives have three grams of carbs and it's very high in fat. That's why they make olive oil from it. And then we'll finish up the low carb category with a whole group, a whole bunch of non-starchy vegetables. So non-starchy also means that they're very watery. They're very high in water content. Most of these are about 90% water. So we have spaghetti squash with five grams of carbs, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and bell pepper, all very low carb, roughly about four grams. Swiss Brussels sprouts with about five grams and bell pepper with about three to four grams in the green and about four grams for the yellow and the red cabbage. All are great food. And of course, cauliflower, celery, cucumber, and eggplant. They are all about two to three grams of carbs, mushroom, okra, zucchini, tomato are all great foods with very, very low carbs. Next, we are getting into a category of foods where carb content depends on quantity, so it's going to depend on how much of it you eat. When it comes to food, it's all dependent on the dose, and it depends on what your goals are. It's essential to be mindful of the serving sizes and nutritional labels when consuming these foods to ensure you're meeting your daily carbohydrate needs without eating it in excess. These foods are 1. Grains. Whole grains like bread, pasta, rice, and cereals contain carbohydrates, but the amount can vary depending on the serving size and type of grain. 2. Fruits. Fresh fruits like apples, bananas, and berries are high in carbohydrates, but the exact amount depends on the size and type of fruit. 3. Vegetables. Leafy greens like spinach and broccoli are low in carbohydrates, while starchy vegetables like potatoes and corn are higher in carbs. The amount of carbohydrates in vegetables can vary depending on the serving size and cooking method. 4. Legumes. Beans, lentils, and peas are high in carbohydrates, but the amount can vary depending on the type and cooking method. 5. Dairy products. Milk, yogurt, and cheese contain carbohydrates, but the amount can vary depending on the type and brand. 6. Baked goods. Cakes, cookies, and pastries contain carbohydrates but the amount can vary depending on the recipe and portion size. 7. Snack foods. Chips, crackers, and popcorn can have varying levels of carbohydrates depending on the brand and serving size. That is all for today's video. I hope you found this video informative. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on my future videos. Don't forget to like and share. Stay healthy. Until next time, take care and adios.